very good morning to you all. A warm welcome to our Zoom webinar, which is organized by uh, GMOA COVID Coordinating Center and the academic wing of GMOA, which is Society for Health, Research and Innovation. Uh, today, our lecture is going to be on assessment and treatment in early hours on COVID patients. Uh, I kindly uh, invite you all to mute your microphones and turn off the camera during the presentation and use the chat box uh, to clear your queries and at the end of the every session. Uh, I, I would like to thank Dr. Dila Napa Singha, the consultant community phys uh, phys emergency physician of uh, District General Hospital Kegar and Dr. Bhaginda Gunavardhana, consultant emergency physician, District General Hospital Chilau, and Dr. Chamara Bergoda Arachi, consultant emergency physician at District General Hospital Mathara. And also I would like to thank Dr. Indika Larral, consultant emergency physician, National Hospital Colombo, who was the former president, Sri Lanka College of Emergency, and Dr. Nandana Jayati Lekka, consultant emergency physician, Teaching Hospital Peradhania, who was the former council member of Sri Lanka College of Emergency, who are uh, helping to organize this event. Thank you. Oxygen saturation at the moment. If not, uh, let me know, uh, first of all, right? Thank you very much, uh, GMOA, for arranging this uh, useful uh, sessions uh, during this pandemic season. Uh, the uh, Currently, oxygen is a very hot topic, uh, and it's a burning issue in the world. This is a very important topic as a doctor. So try to pick it up a few points and implement uh, your knowledge after this lecture. First, uh, I will explain about oxygen and oxygen therapy. Then I will, co uh, will correlate with the uh, COVID. Right. If you have any uh, questions, so you can inbox. Right. Oxygen. As you all know, it's colorless, odorless, tasteless, gaseous, inorganic element. It's very important. It plays an important role in oxidative phosphorylation where you produce your ATPs. Uh, can you remember your good old days biochemistry? Aerobic uh, uh, production is about 38 ATPs and anaerobic production is two. So there is a significant difference in in aerobics as well as in anaerobics. So it's a very important essential element in energy production. In 1783, French physician called Kalinen who used oxygen as a therapy. Since then, we have been medical people using oxygen. Right. Physical characteristic of oxygen, specific gravity of 1.1, Critical temperature minus 118 degrees Celsius. Critical pressure is 51 atm. Melting point is minus 218 degrees Celsius. Atomic weight is 80. What is oxygen therapy? Oxygen therapy is the administration of oxygen, which is concent which concentration is greater than that of room air. You use oxygen for hypoxia or you use oxygen to prevent hypoxia. This is very important. Room air uh, oxygen concentration is about 21%, but you use more than that higher uh, concentration and use to prevent or treat for hypoxia. This is very important. Keep in mind here. Right. Dose. It's the medication. It's a drug. As a doctor, you have to prescribe a drug. So I think we have already forgotten about this thing. You have to titrate oxygen according to the patient's PAO2, that is partial pressure of arterial oxygen and saturation. You use oxygen as an inhalational agent. Uh, you have to write down the both upper and lower targets. Shall we write a prescription? How do you write? Nasal prone oxygen, two liters for one hour. Keep saturation around 94 to 98. After five minutes, if saturation not picking up, increase to two liters. After one hour, you have to do an ABG. If saturation is dropping, stat inform doctor. That is how you have to prescribe. So otherwise, it's not uh, 
a complete prescription. All right. What are the indications to start oxygen? First one is hypoxia and inadequate oxygen delivery. Conditions like shock status, carbon monoxide poisoning, poisoning may promote dissociation with dissociation carbon dioxide bound to carbon monoxide bound to the hemoglobin. Pneumothorax, pneumomatosis, where you replace nitrogen with oxygen. Decompression sickness, anaerobic infection, you use hyperbaric oxygen. Cluster headaches, pre-oxygenation for intubation, prevention of hypoxia during procedural sedation. Those are the indications. Right. As I earlier mentioned, oxygen is a medication. So if you give, uh, you can get side effects. If you give more oxygen, there will be toxicity. So there are cardiovascular toxicity as well as respiratory toxicity. Direct myocardial depression when you give high amount of FiO2 or hyperbaric oxygen. Uh, myocardial depression means negative ionotropic activity. Depression of hemopoiesis. You know that uh, cyanotic heart disease patients, uh, you can you, you will have uh, increased amount of hemoglobin that is called polycythemia. Likewise, when you give higher concentration oxygen, especially for uh, ICU patient where you get oxygen for months, like then you can get hypo uh, hemo uh, reduced hemopoiesis. And other thing is free radicals. Pulmonary complications are more related with the uh, uh, COPD patient, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patient. You can get inflammatory lung injuries, hypoventilation and hypercarbia in COPD patient with high FiO2. You can remember again your good old day physiology. Respiratory center will be insensitive due to carbon dioxide. When you give high amount of oxygen, what will happen is there will be hypoventilation, sometimes respiratory arrest. The other one is absorption eclectasis. If you give six minutes of 100% oxygen, there will be absorption eclectasis. So be careful when you prescribe oxygen to COPD patient. Their saturation is, if you can manage somewhere around 88 to 92, that is more than enough for them. Right, physiological consideration of oxygen. Oxygen available to the tissue depend on oxygen content of arterial blood and blood flow. Total oxygen flux equal to hemoglobin saturation into carbon dioxide, ca cardiac output. Hemoglobin into uh, saturation is oxygen content of arterial blood flow. You can see that total oxygen flux is mainly depend on hemoglobin and cardiac output. That is very important to keep in your mind. Oxygen transport, it's mainly hemoglobin, 95%. Dissolved plasma is less than about 5%. So oxygen content in blood is again depend on hemoglobin. Oxygen tension. This is again physiology. Inspires oxygen uh, tension is about 150. This is uh, uh, room air oxygen. You have to reduce your vapor. Uh, ox uh, vapor. Then alluvial oxygen tension is about 100 to 105. Again, you have to reduce carbon dioxide tension. Arterial oxygen tension is more or equal to uh, alluvial level, unless if there is AA gradients, conditions like shunt, VQ mismatch, or diffusion problem. So if there is no diffusion problems, then arterial and uh, alveolar oxygen tension is more or equal normal. Then the venous oxygen tension is about 40. That is how you get the diffu diffusion at uh, your alveolar and tissue level. So there is high gradient from arterial to venous. So it's about almost about 100 differences there. Right. Again, you can see that air, yeah, it's about 150. Your mitochondrial level, it's about 40. Right. Right. This is the topic that we are, we are going to discuss. Hypoxia. There are four types of hypoxia we have. The first one is uh, hypoxic hypoxia. The second one is anemic hypoxia. Third one is stagnant hypoxia. And fourth one is histotoxic hypoxia. I will explain one by one. First one is hypoxic hypoxia, where the problem is hypoxic gas mixture. Your oxygen concentration is reduced. 
uh, in conditions like high altitude, hypoventilation, shots like septal defects, mainly VSD, diffusion defects like pneumonia, local collapse, ARDS, the common topic is yes, because there is a VQ mismatch. The problem is oxygen mixture. The second one is anemic hypoxia. I have already discussed about oxygen carrying capacity, which mainly depends on hemoglobin. So anemic hypoxia means if you if you are any hemoglobin level is low so that is called anemia the other one is altered hemoglobin where it's called technical anemia where you are uh, active your usable uh, hemoglobin level is low because hemoglobin is irreversibly bind to carbon monoxide with hemoglobin in sulfur so as a result of that usable he I mean, uh, hemoglobin level is low the third one is stagnant hypoxia there is a stagnation that is called inadequate tissue perfusion that is shock. So generalized problem as well as localized problem. Generalized problem, hypo, hypovolemia, trauma uh, during shock. Mitral stenosis, your cardiac output is low. Myocardial infarction, you get cardiogenic shock. So as a result of that, there is a generalized inadequate, inadequate tissue perfusion. The localized problem, arterial obstruction due to thromboembolic phenomena, then uh, you, you know that tension pneumothorax where your pulmonary uh, arteries and uh, arteries are and then uh, tension uh, tamponade where the pericardial effusion is there so there is obstruction so you can get generalized as well as localized problem the last one is histotoxic hypoxia the cell cannot utilize the oxygen that is the problem your hemoglobin level is good your oxygen mixture is good you have adequate oxygen the third one is there is no obstruction or stagnation, but still cannot utilize the oxygen. Result because electron transport system or cytochrome oxidase is paralyzed. Conditions like cyanide poisoning. So you can't do much with your oxygen. We'll see benefit of oxygen therapy in his hypoxia. Total oxygen flux is again, can you remember this one? Hemoglobin into saturation and cardiac output. Hemoglobin means uh, the type of hypoxia anemia. Saturation means hypoxic. Cardiac output means stagnant. So benefit of oxygen is mainly dependent on these situations. Hypoxic hypoxia, the problem is oxygen mixture. It's benefit more. Anemia, stagnant hypoxia, the answer is yes, but you have to correct the problem. Anemia, yes, hemoglobin level. Stagnation, uh, 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 your shock status, you have to reduce, uh, you have to correct it. Histos of toxic hypoxia, as I earlier mentioned, I mean, no, no point of starting oxygen. The problem is within the cells. Right. Method of oxygen therapy. Method of oxygen therapy, before going to the uh, details, you can see the, the, the con of whole country's problem, like in oxygen capacity. We have jumbo cylinders, B cylinders and D cylinders and liquid oxygen separately. So jumbo cylinder contain about 46.7 liters of liquid oxygen. I will repeat it, it's liquid oxygen. This liquid oxygen can convert to the gaseous oxygen. You can see this slide, one liter, one liter of liquid oxygen delivers 861 gaseous oxygen. So that is how 46.7 converted to 7,000. 10 liters, 1,200. 7.5, uh, 4.7, after about 675. The next slide is a uh, type of oxygen therapy. We are here, we are dealing with mainly, there are two types, orthobaric and hyperbaric. This lecture, we are dealing with orthobaric uh, oxygen therapy, but I will explain both and I will give some uh, uh, examples for hyperbaric as well. Orthobaric means giving oxygen more than 21%. I, I earlier mentioned about that the therapy is always more than 21% at ambient ATM pressure. This is ambient ATP pressure. That is normal room air pressure. Giving oxygen more than 21% at a high ambient pressure. That is more than uh, more than one ATM. That is called hyperbaric oxygen. Hyperbaric oxygen we use in uh, decompression sickness, carbon monoxide poisoning, Necrotizing soft tissue infection, refractory osteomyelitis uh, during anaerobic uh, uh, anaerobic situation infection. 
Odobaric oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy. This is called conventional therapy. Right. There are two types. Oxygen therapy devices, low flow oxygen delivery, high flow oxygen delivery. Low flow oxygen delivery, variable performance devices we use and patient dependent. The, the condition is patient dependent. High flow oxygen delivery, fixed performance devices we use and patient independent. So it is very important, low flow oxygen delivery, variable performance devices and patient dependent. This is the problem, right? The oxygen therapy devices, variable performance devices, what are things? No capacity, nasal prongs, a small capacity mask, large capacity back with mask. Fixed performance devices, this is called high air flow enrichment devices, anesthesia circuits and ventilators, right? We'll discuss about variable performance devices used to provide 25 to roughly about 100% oxygen when there is no need of accurate concentration. Oxygen concentration vary depending on patient's breathing since the rate do not satisfy the peak flow. So this is very important. Oxygen concentration vary depending on the patient's uh, respiratory effort. You can see that now the first example is variable performance uh, nasal prones or nasal cannula deliver effort to depend on two factors. What are the two factors? Like set flow, the oxygen, and patient inspiratory flow. This is patient's effort. So set flow. We are we are the people who are setting the flow, and the patient inspiration flow should be there. It's very simple one. You can see. Flow rate is 1 to 6. The FIO2 is 25, 29, 33, 37. But there are limiting factors like, you know, the dryness of the mucosa, crusting or secretion and epistaxis. This disadvantages limit the, the delivery of oxygen. Usually we give maximum about 4 liters. You can't give more than that, right? So the other thing is uh, uh, you can get other problems. But otherwise, it's very easy to use, well tolerated, comfortable for a long period of time. Patient can eat and talk easy. So if you can give less than four liters, comfortable for a long period of time as well. But the problem is it's patient dependent, it's dryness is there, and the, the other problems. The second one is face masks for Hudson mask. This is again, deliver oxygen concentration of four to 60% depend on the flow rate six to eight liters per minute and depth of the breathing depth of the breathing means tidal volume and minute volume minute volume means tidal volume into respiratory rate so it's depend on the patient's factor at least five liters you have to give otherwise there will be carbon dioxide rebreathing so you have to start from the five uh, the point of five liters only for a short period of time may or may not be humidified. Try to do it, uh, try to give humidified air, otherwise it will be very uncomfortable. Disadvantage, require good fit, otherwise you can't get good, good enough oxygen. Dry and irritation of eye. Uncomfortable for patient with facial trauma, burns and things like that. Advantages, again the same, easy to use, light fade. You can give a fire to up to about 60% improve humidification. This is the most underrated uh, uh, equipment we have. I don't think uh, we will use it properly. This is called non rebreathing mask. Deliver oxygen concentration almost around 100. We can say about 90% with at 15 liters of mini. There is a reserve bag to entertain oxygen. One way valve is there that will prevent oxygen, carbon dioxide rebreathing or oxygen dilution. Bag should not be collapsed on inspiration. Tight seal is essential. Reservoir bag must expand freely. So, this is a, a very important uh, equipment, and uh, you have to learn this very well. Disadvantages: impractical for long time, long period. Malfunction can cause again carbon dioxide buildup. It's a little bit expensive. Deliver highest possible oxygen concentration. Let's say about 90%, FIO2 about percent, FIO2 about 90%.
suitable for severe hypoxia with spontaneous breathing. Again, you can see this bottom line, sp spontaneous breathing should be there. All right. Then we will move to the next topic. This is fixed for four months devices. You know, total flow is high with or without entrainment. High flow oxygen devices deliver constant oxygen, F52. Therefore, it referred as fixed performance devices. Fixed F52 is achieved by providing very high flow of PO2, which exceeds the patient minute volume. As can you remember, minute volume means tidal volume, uh, uh, minute volume, minute volume, the respiratory rate into uh, minute, uh, tidal volume. Peak flow is about 35 liters per minute. So you, there are three types, Venturi mass, high flow nasal cannula, high flow oxygen generator. So I will explain first the Venturi mask. It's consisted of three parts, a mask, a jet nozzles, and entertainment port. So oxygen is delivered under pressure via this jet nozzle, which act dramatically increase the velocity of the gas. Provide high concentration of oxygen from 24 to 40 percent at 3 to 15 liters. Venturi mass has interchangeable or adjustable valve that can uh, give you uh, uh, different uh, F52 levels. You can see this uh, picture. We can give two liters, four liters, eight liters, ten liters, and fifteen liters. So according to this color, there are five colors. It's give 24, 28, 35, 40, 60. This is not enough. You can go for a rebreathing mask. So this is uh, the, this is very important with patient with the COPD. You can give calculated amount of FIO2. Venturi mask advantages, as I earlier said, deliver most precise oxygen concentration. Precise FIO2 about 24, FIO2 about 60. Doesn't dry mucous membrane because of we have a paper. The disadvantages uncomfortable, risk for skin irritation because of the flow. All right, high flow nasal oxygen, CPAP and BiPAP, and ventilator. Dr. Gunavardhan and Dr. Birgud Arachi will uh, uh, explain about that in their lectures. Right. Now we have come uh, come to the uh, last point. This is very important. Now we have identified the hypoxia. We have started oxygen. Now the last part is we have to monitor the patient. Need to start on time. This is very, very important. Don't go behind numbers, saturation and things like that. Go behind patient's clinical features. This is very important. That is why we are missing a lot of patients, uh, patients' uh, clinical features, right? So the most important thing is here is uh, like, you know, patients' clinical features. The first one is uh, uh, worker breathing, whether there is sweating, whether there is any uh, intercostal, subcostal resistance, you have to identify. The other most important thing is uh, of, uh, patients' uh, features like pregnancy patient, Obese patients, diabetic patients, kidney disease patients, liver failure patients. So they have to, they have a high tendency of getting hypoxia. So you have to identify them early and start oxygen. Should be a target value. For example, as I said, the COPD patient, the target should be 88 to 92. The other patients about 94 to 98. Myocardial infarction patient, saturation should be, not be more than 94. Then you have to monitor respiratory rate, saturation, worker breathing, initially about four watt hour, then you can increase the, the duration. You have to do a blood gas out of one, one hour and check PO2 and PCO2. And according to those values, you have to adjust the oxygen therapy. Come down, monitoring vitals when patient is stable. Think about tail of oxygen. Oxygen is a trap. You have to tail off it, not rapidly, but gradually, right? Right, now we have come to the uh, proper uh, topic, COVID. Burning topic, hot topic, yes. 
before that uh, i have to explain some abbreviations fio2 it's a fraction of inspired air pao2 it's rtl oxygen partial pressure saturation spo2 pf ratio it's fio2 into uh, divided by po2 sf ratio spo2 to fio2 ratio <clears throat> there is a, a, a gradient i uh, discussed earlier difference between allyl oxygen tension and rtl oxygen tension a, a ratio ratio of p p rtl oxygen tension and allyl oxygen tension respiratory index this is a uh, a a gradient divided by pao2 so normal value is less than 0.4 with age will increase now you can remember this right so we'll use it then practical approach to oxygen start oxygen right. this is a, a chart i took it from uh, national guidelines uh, covid guidelines so we have three type of patients mild moderate and severe according to three parameters very simple parameters first one is respiratory rate second one is heart rate third one is oxygen saturation on whom yeah. you use pulse oximeter meter for this right so mild uh, patient this covid positive mild patient covid positive suspected patient with mild you can see their parameters are almost normal right saturation respiratory rate everything is normal no need to start oxygen for this patient right the second part second patient type is moderate type you can see their respiratory rate heart rate and saturation so respiratory rate and heart rate are mar marginally elevated and saturation is around 90 to 94 this is the patient who need oxygen simple uh, oxygen therapy the next team uh, team is severe patient their respiration heart rate saturation is just there no right so this type of patient what you have to do is check the red flags the these uh, symptoms are there the clinical signs are there just inform the issue and cook a bit right patient may need a bit respiratory rate more than 30 saturation is less than 92 on air bilateral worsening infiltration of chest x ray pf ratio 300 it should be around 400 to 500 but it's 300 means very low sf ratio is 235 heart rate is 120 systolic blood pressure is 90 less than 90 lactate is more than 2 so when you see this uh, this clinical symptom at least one out of this just inform the icu and uh, uh is prepare for the icu bed right the next step like the first one is then moderate type you see that uh, moderate type we can use nasal cannula or face mask try to give oxygen and try to increase their saturation right? if not satisfied after about one hour then go for a venturi mask ultimately you can go for a non retreat this is very important but severe patient they may need high flow nasal cannula cpap and non invasive ventilation or ventilation right so this is very important to identify the patient that's why i told you it's very important to identify otherwise we will miss the patient's life right you can see the uh, again this is from a national guideline the anesthesiology guidelines uh, this is uh, the national thing about covid positive patient if saturation is less than 92 on air what you have to do is check if the patient is rapidly deteriorated check the respiratory system cardiovascular system and cns so then and there you have to intubate the patients there is no other oxygen therapy for this patient right the next type next time uh, next uh, group is uh, yes they are not rapidly deteriorating but check then they are over the breathing if worker breathing is normal right so they don't have a intercostal subcostal recession no sweating level of consciousness is good not confused no uh, things like that start low flow oxygen right up to about 15 liters per minute uh, if i do a 0.4 
pace mass venture your non repeat then after about one hour check the saturation and the uh, clinical other clinical features the saturation is 90 to 96 yes continue the same oxygen therapy if not then you have to go for the uh, high flow oxygen uh, the other thing is other group work of breathing is increased try with cpap non breathers and uh, uh, niv then check the oxygen if oxygen is still low and increase work of breathing yes then you have to go for ventilation if not continue the uh, same management like cpap or high nasal tones do the monitoring regularly Right. Then it's a ventilation is uh, depend on the patient's uh, situation. Do X-ray or CT scan. I think in the practical thing is X-ray. Check the X-rays uh, thing. Whether it's type one or type two. Type two means ARDS a severe condition. Type one is just a non ARD like picture. Go according to the uh, these uh, protocols. I think uh, Doctor Bergudarach will explain about that. If this uh, protocol is uh, fail, then we have to go for it more. This is the, uh, I think the success rate is very, very low, very, very low. Don't wait for this slide, go with this slide. You know, if work of breathing is normal, go for the low flow, otherwise high flow, then only we have to integrate the patient. Right. Uh, almost finished my lecture. Devices to use. The first one is, uh, you know, that uh, oxygen cylinders. You can see the oxygen cylinders uh, with uh, white neck and black body. Uh, 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 there are about six types of cylinders. That is what you have to know. Then the, the most important thing is uh, the bowl of this uh, uh, flow meat. Bowl must be centered on the light. Now you can see here two liters. Here it's 1.5 liters. If it is two liter, means you have to a bowl must be centered on the line. So you have to be very careful about that. Right. The next one is oxygen outlet. This is white. Gaseous outlet is black. Don't confuse, especially during stress situation. Right. Then the humidifier is very important patient with tracheostomy because the upper airway is all, almost, you know, uh, I mean, upper airway is not there. So that's why tracheostomy is very, uh, the humidification is very important for tracheostomy patient. Their stratified column epithelium is no more there. Bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis patient. So physiotherapy patient, you have to use humidified oxygen. Try to use humidifier uh, as much as possible and that will be beneficial for the patient right what is this this is bag valve and mask this is called you call this ambu bag so these are the things there is a face mask expiratory valve is there peep valve is there pop up pop up valve is there self-limiting bag is there so oxygen inlet the uh, everything is there so it's very important to know about each and everything about this uh, ambu bag and before using you have to check whether it's working or not right tracheostomy mask yes you can see that uh, tracheostomy mask it's neck breathing pay for the next very patients i just oxygen flow to maintain target oxygen this is cpap and the part of cpap right this is a high flow nasal oxygen machine. So Dr. Bargain will explain about that. All right. Any questions? I can't see any questions there. All right. No questions. Uh, yes, uh, this, there's a question regarding home uh, monitoring of COVID patients. 
if you don't have pulse oximetry, what are the other parameters you can use? The first one is, uh, this is very trick, tricky question uh, as far as Sri Lanka is concerned because we are going behind pulse rate, respiratory rate and pulse oximeter. Even I don't think that a patient can uh, you know, count their pulse rate and uh, respiratory rate as well. So this is, uh, I think uh, we have to do this uh, breath count counting system. And uh, I think over the phone, we can uh, have a chat with the patient and whether, whether we can see whether the patient can talk properly likewise. So, uh, you know, you know, all parameters we can't do it like, you know, respiratory rate, uh, heart rate and things like that. Yes, pulse oximeter, I don't think uh, it's practical. Yes, slides I can uh, send you. Uh, time frame for X-ray. It's depend on the situation. Like you know, first of all, you have to go for airway, breathing, circulation. Why? If a patient is in a terrible situation. So after that, uh, uh, you can ask uh, uh, inward X-ray if it is available. But if you don't have X-ray, uh, inward X-ray, then that will be a problem because unstable patient you can send for a X-ray. So uh, you know you have what the most important thing is oxygenation because stabilize the patient. Then think about the other things. So if you have a some facilities or X-ray facilities at your emergency department or at, at the ward, then you can do. Otherwise, you can just wait, treat for the patient, not for the digit numbers. Can you please explain high flow oxygen therapy? Yes, they, they are definitely Dr. Bargain will explain about high flow oxygen therapy. You have to wait and see, right? Okay. What are the parameters to check? How frequent? Yes, this is very important. Like, you know, when you start oxygen, check the saturation every five minutes. Right? Every five minutes right? If the saturation is not, saturation not, not big enough, after five, I mean, not picking up, then you have to increase oxygen after five minutes. The other parameters like respiratory rate, uh, heart rate, uh, again, saturation, you have to do part hourly for at least about two hours until patient get uh, usually uh, stabilized. Thereafter, patient is stable. You, you think that saturation is okay, blood pressure is okay, heart rate is okay, then do it for hourly or two hourly, right? This is very important. Initial period is very, very important. Yeah, you have to do it five minutes and increase your oxygenation. And if it is not helpful after about one hour, then can uh, try to do another one, like you know, you know, nasal phone to uh, high flow oxygen, things like that. Right? That's what I explained earlier. What is the protocol of tail of oxygen? Right? This is again uh, the problem. Like you know, first. Check whether patient's saturation, ABGO, you know, blood gas, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Do it step by step, gradually, not rapidly. Uh, what you have to do is like, you know, uh, when you like heart hourly, like you can reduce a fire to probably about five by five, like, and uh, oh, uh, liters uh, in the normal uh, nasal prone, no face mask liters wise, uh, gradually reduce over one now. So take some time for about two hours and then stop it. If there is any any deterioration at any point, you have to increase again. Okay. This is very important. Oxygen is not the problem, even though <laughs> it's not available. But uh, you know, the patient is the uh, our patient is our concern. Can you explain how to check FIO2 level in uh, resmit uh, CPAP? Uh, I think uh, Bargain will explain about that. Uh, FIO2 level means it's depend on the patient's uh, flow, and then you have to increase. It. You have to give 15 liters of oxygen first, and then only you can increase the uh, FIO2. I think Bargain will explain about that. Any questions? Right. Finally, this is my humble request. Take few learning points from this lecture, at least one or two or three. Right? Don't take everything. If you can, if you can't remember everything, it's okay. 
only, but try to identify hypoxia early as possible, right? And start oxygen on time. Otherwise, patient may die. This will prevent a death if you can start oxygen on time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for the informative presentation. Uh, since there are no more queries, I would like to thank Dr. Dilan Singha for his excellent presentation on behalf of the GMOI COVID Coordination Center and GMOI Sri Knowledge Academy. Thank you very much, sir.